Hi guys, welcome back to another video by Daniel and John and in today's video we are replacing a front wheel bearing on a Discovery 2 TD5. Uh, on the MOT it was an advisory that there's a little bit of play, it's the offside driver's side but we're gonna, we are going to do both. Um, I'll just tell you what we've got first, this is the wheel bearing, it's a complete unit, it comes with the ABS sensor, uh, all makes 4x4 from JGS 4x4 online, a really excellent company, obviously you can buy things separately if you need to but that's the whole unit that's, this is what the unit looks like if you think about buying it okay so to start with we have loosened the wheel nuts while it's on the ground so you just cover this little bar. just using a breaker bar the yeah breaker bar allows you to get a lot of leverage on yeah. something okay on our wheel nuts it's 27 mil yeah standard thing yeah so now they're loose enough, we've obviously jacked it up, we've got an axle stand underneath the axle underneath and we're ready to start Just for it. safety. And it's just a matter of taking the wheel off and then we'll come back to you uh, and take a few other parts off. Yeah, we'll have to take the brakes off and bits like that. We yeah. have done this job on the back yeah. before. So it shouldn't be too difficult. I think the important thing is just prepare yourself and safety is paramount just because it's a heavy vehicle so make sure you've got decent jack and the, like Daniel says axle stands under there. So we'll film this video in several parts and um, hopefully it helps you if you're How thinking about doing that? this job. How much was that? Can you remember? Uh, £70. I think you can buy it with the, out of the ABS but to be honest if you're replacing it we will replace a whole lot. And where are we now? We're 2023. 2023 February. February. And we're doing this but it, we've got sunshine. We've got nice weather today, so, so it's ideal. We're making the most of it. Hi, welcome back. So we're at the point now where the wheel is off and we need to remove two caliper bolts to start with. And the socket size for that is 13 mil. And you will need this breaker bar I'm talking about. And it's the smaller one. And those are there. This gives you you see, just loosen it off like that, slowly. That's nice and loose. And then you do the bottom one, which is here. And we'll loosen that off in a few minutes. And then when we've removed that... I saw that's on there a bit better than that. Yeah. yeah it's better than that. It's tight. You might need to use a little extension bar on that just to give us a... So room, while so. John's doing that, so before we started removing any bolts, give him a quick wire brush and a bit of penetrating fluid. We use this stuff here, PMA, but you can use whatever brand you want. So by using a, a small extension bar, so it's quite good sometimes when things don't go quite right, we can now access that bolt and loosen it. And I'll show that. There Just there. there. You need a little extension bar just to yeah. get the the, the, it's the bottom one's awkward. Right. And then you can get your socket on and just literally undo it. So I think what we'll do, we'll remove this and then we'll uh, sort of return to the next day so we're not missing anything and you can see what even what size uh, sockets you need and all the bits, yeah? Okay, so we've got the caliper bolts off the bottom which is uh, uh, a little, little thing. Just in case you miss that, it's a 13 mil socket. Yeah. Or spanner, yeah. There'll be a bit of pressure on the brakes. So you want to probably get like a pry, pry bar. bar in here. Now, obviously, you've got the arch, wheel arch, but you just want to pry this off. Obviously, you need to be careful with the uh, brake lines. We're replacing these, so it's not such a big issue for us. So we'll just put them. I'll just rest it on. We'll just rest that there. No big deal. That there isn't. Um, that is, um, penetrating fluid. Yeah. It's not brake fluid. And then to pop your brakes out. It's a time to give everything a clean up, really. So you've got a bit of dust and things. We'll just give it a bit of a clean up. Yeah. Um, just a, as an obvious thing, get a box or a bag just to give everything. Yeah. Just so you don't lose anything. Right. So the next ones to remove are the cali uh, the carrier bolts, and they're a funny one actually. Um, they're like a, like a torque twelve head. point. Um, bolt. We'll just get the bits we need to remove that and then we'll come back. Hi, welcome back. So we're now removing the carrier and holding that onto the front of two of these. And these are what you call 12 point. And these are special sockets. Multi, multi point. Multi point. Multi point bolts, yeah. It's not like those where. It's not like a, it's not a hex. So you need one of those. 
The one we found fits best for this is a three quarter inch. It's 19 mil. The 90 mil does fit, but it slips a little bit. So if you can get an old three quarter imperial, that'd be your best thing. And how have we got these off? We've used a bit of the penetrating lubricant first. We think that's brilliant stuff. So we started on doing it, put a bit of penetrating fluid in there and did a bit more and just be careful. We did use a breaker bar to start with just to crack the nut to put yeah, a bit of pressure on. Turn the wheel out as well, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, we turn the wheel out. Um, just to get better access here. So there's two of them. When you put these back in, you will need a little bit of lock, lock tight yeah. or thread lock, yeah? So yeah. there's two of them to come out. Okay. Mm. In the bag. Now that should just lift away. There we go. Nice so and easy. And while you've got the carrier out, you probably want to just put a bit more clean this and put a bit more grease in here. And those are important. And also, um, also give give this a clean where the, the, the pads sit. Yeah. So we removed a screw from here. You see that there? There's a screw that just yeah. holds this on. Now we should now just be able to take the disc off. And there you go. I will say that we did replace the um, discs and pads on this probably about a year ago so things have come off it slightly more easier than one that hadn't had the work done let's be honest yeah but if you've got the right tools and patience there's no re reason why you can't get this stuff off yeah absolutely so um, I'm gonna remove this in a minute the uh, bearing and when we get to that point uh, we'll come back and uh, show you a bit more okay Okay, so the next thing you're going to need to remove is, is the brake dust shroud. And there's this little uh, angled bracket here for the ABS sensor. That sort of sits, that, for reference, that sits behind it. Yeah. Um, they're 10 mil bolts. Um, if you're doing this for the first time, they'll, you need to really clean them up and penetrate fluid. These are new because we've had this off before. but And it just pulls, pulls off like that. Literally pull it forward and off and that's it basically. Nice and easy yeah. and the bracket just sits behind it like I, yeah. like I said. And just for reference, the hooky bit faces the back of the car. Yeah. There. Yeah. And then, well, what do we need to do next? So, so we then need to get this wheel bearing this off. This actual bearing whole unit. Sounds a bit rough anyway, I can feel it. Yeah, it's just on the thing though. It's got the bolts for it are actually around the back. One there. One down there, and the threads come through here, so it's the bolts are from the back. There's two at the top, two at the bottom. Yeah, so the central. So if I show this, this new one, you can see where they are. Yeah. There's four of them. Yeah. Two at the bottom. Yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. And, and two at the top, so they need to come out. So what we'll do is we'll clean them up thoroughly, load of penetrate fluid, and try and crack them a bit more penetrate fluid, and, and then come back to you. And come back to you. And then we will. There's a half shaft in here. We will open to differential, yeah, yeah. and we'll open that up there. So we we'll have to open this this nut up here. There. Just bash it out a bit. If it's been bashed in, it should have been. Yeah, it has. And then we'll take the nut off, and we'll get a little bit further with it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we're we're at the point where we've got the hub nut off. This one here. Just want to share some things with you first. So you see this notch here. It's like a notch on side. Yeah, a little notch. This part here gets banged into it when it's really tightened up. And to release this, you have to get in there and bang that back out. That's bashed in there to stop the nut ever moving off. It's just a safety you, thing. You do want to replace that as well. To remove this, bear it's been on 20 years. We use some uh, penetrating fluid, multi lube. We have had to use uh, a little bit of heat just to move yeah, things just along. Just around a bit. it, yeah. Uh, in our arsenal, We've got a breaker bar as well, and the socket that we've used on it, we've only got multi points, 32 mil. Yeah, um, we've got an impact wrench, electric one. Um, we did use that on there. This is not an impact socket, we know that, but it's what we've got. We put it in reverse, and it did move it in the end. It's got it off for us. Yeah, that's the main thing. So the reason we're taking this off first, and not those four bolts at the back, is so it's still locked onto something. Otherwise, you can imagine it'd be a nightmare to. Uh, Try and get so this half off shaft with it goes in there basically, and it's it's locked on the end of it at the moment. So we need to undo that. Once we've got that off, we can then undo the four bolts. And really, so it's quite a simple job when you think about it. That's the, probably stages. that's probably the worst bit about the job getting yeah. this off because it's torqued so high. And obviously, once we put it back on, we'll we'll torque, torque it up what it should be. But um, but let's 
been on 20 years. I think this is the original bearing. Yeah, I would have thought so. So, it's an advisory for an MOT, so we'll remove it anyway. It's done for next year then. If you start squeaking like that, not you personally. Like although now. you might, although you might be squeaking after doing this job, <laughs> I can, I can almost guarantee you will yeah. be. <laughs> All we're blessed with today is this beautiful sky, and that's why we're out here in Feb doing it. This is February, 2023. How's it going there? Yeah, this is really real tough cookie to get this off because of how how high it's. You just got to persevere with it. It's quite a big bit of kit as well. Yeah, just don't give up. And there we go. That's what's inside it. I've got a front wheel bearing out, but holding this in there, these four bolts, and they go from the back all the way through to there. Now, those are a 15 mil. There's four of them. Uh, they need a real good clean before you take them out. We had one that would not come out. You can see how bad it was. So your solution to that is to use a 14 mil. It's called an easy out. You see in there, it's all, it's like a swirl. And what it does- the, the set that we've got. So you can buy this from Screwfix, this set. Yeah, it's a Ruber. You can buy a Ruber. Screwfix. Yes, yeah. or anywhere. And uh, you just put it on there and as you twist to try and get it out, it grips and cuts into the nut so it comes loose. We used plenty of penetrating oil. Um, we had to use a breaker bar at some point. And then where that shaft sits in there, you can use what that one there sits in the back. You can use what's called a puller and you wind this in and it pulls this off. Yeah. Ours is in a pretty sorry state. I reckon it's the original, to be honest. Um, so what we did is we banged it either side with a mallet and it, we had a gap and then we just used a little pry bar just to ease it very yeah, carefully. You, you, the seal here, you can see how rusty and bad it is, that's in, against that. So I've had to uh, free that really. Um, and the half shaft came out came out with it as yeah. well and we just tapped that from below and held that and now, fell out. When we did the backs, uh, this half shaft slid out quite easy this but you can see it's it's really dry it, you know it needs sorting out so um, it needs clean up a little bit of grease on it when it goes back in yeah so it, it, I, i'm guessing this is original looking by the state of it but i think the longest bit with us was, was getting the bolts out getting these bolts out um my advice um and we will do that fortunately we've got some spares but make sure you've got some spares of these i'd probably replace them to be honest yeah and if you are putting them back in they have locked tight on them yeah and do it up to the, i haven't got the torque sheet with me but you need to do everything back up to the correct torque just to be safe um and it's a special socket which clicks when you're up to the right oh and the abs basically. the abs um oh, yeah little support. bolt was on these um hex ones yeah so and it was a, I think it was a H4. Yeah, I think we put that notes here. So this there screws into there. You can yeah. sit there, and uh, yeah, it's one of those you need to get out with. And I'll show you what it is. Hang on. You got that? It's a, it's a five, size five. My advice there before you try and take that out. It's the wrong way that. It's size five. Um, give it a good clean in there, yeah. even a little screwdriver, even some detergent just to clean it all up because otherwise if it slips it's going to cause you problems. Unless I mean you can keep this you know, if you want or you can replace it's probably best to replace it if you're yeah. replacing this whole lot. Yeah, we're going to put off. a new one in um, to replace and it. There's a, grom, there's a grommet up there that it goes through and you just pull it out and, and replace it. And basically it ends up down there just on a free pin connector. It's easy enough to do. So there's no wonder when you look at the state of this, why it's got a bit of play in it. Uh, Shame we can't find a date stamp on it, but I guess it is the original looking at. Um, oh yeah, I mean, you, here, that's as rough as anything. Rough, doesn't and it? if you listen to this one, this is. Very smooth. Yeah, no, no noise coming from it at all. This one is. 
ready yeah. to fall to bits. Yeah. So I if you do, I think in all honesty, if you're doing one side, do the other. We've we've bought we've two. Done, we've done the rear on this before. You know, after 20 years, it's yeah. I mean, that's probably what some of the noises sometimes we can hear, and it's been picked up uh, as we've already said as a, a failure potentially for next year. Right, we're going to give this all a clean up. Um, we might replace the CV boots because they're looking a bit sorry for themselves. I think my world to be honest. Um, clean all this up so it's uh, better, and then uh, reassemble. Reassemble and that goes in first. Yeah. Then the bearing. Then if when you're thing. taking these off, just protect the end spline there with yeah. a rag or something. You don't want it damaged. Yeah. And that's really it, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, we've got no leaks, which is good. Seal's all right. The seal, the seal in there's all right. Uh, we could replace the seal as well while we're in here. So the amount of prying out and putting a new one in, in fact, we probably will. Yeah, just as a matter of course. Yeah. So uh, this will now be cleaned up and uh, sat here waiting for uh, a new seal and a new CV boot, which looks like it's ready to be replaced. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. And uh, hopefully this video is helpful to anyone wanting to replace their front wheel bearings on the Discovery. Just one more thing. Reassembly is the reverse. <laughs> <laughs>